Say hello to the Hildebrand if you dare. This is the new German Tier 10 hybrid cruiser in World of Warships. Join me and I will take you on a very quick journey through the ship's specifications, how much it costs, how to get a hold of it, some sample gameplay, of course, and uh, at the end, I will also show you the upgrades I used during the review, as well as the captain's build. And I will share with you my opinion about whether or not I think the ship is worth you purchasing. So let's get started. Okay, uh, let's get started by looking at what Wargaming thinks this thing is supposed to be before I talk about my opinion. In a dev blog on July 3rd, 2024, the uh, folks at Wargaming said, and I'm quoting now, fans of German cruisers rejoice. Uh, um, I'm not sure why a two turret hybrid at tier 10 would make fans of German cruisers rejoice. But that's how it opened. Uh, they described the ship at that point as it's uh, being the first tier 10 German cruiser since the release of Hindi or Hindenburg. Uh, and it's based on a large cruiser hull similar to Siegfried or Eger. Um, although I would say that Siegfried, a research bureau ship, has much bigger guns. Uh, it does have the same size guns essentially as Eger, but we can talk about that a bit later. Um, basically the idea is that this make-believe ship would, is a what if, uh, imagining, uh, an O-class battlecruiser converted into an aircraft carrier. Um, no such thing was ever built as far as I know. If you know differently, let me know in the comments. Uh, it is indeed a hybrid, uh, and it has access to two different aircraft squadrons, which is unusual for a hybrid in the game. Um... It uh, has torpedo bombers, which it clearly must rely on very heavily when you look at the gameplay, as well as a fairly powerful HE strike uh, as well. I personally uh, wasn't impressed with the guns, but the notes in that first dev blog suggest that to succeed in battle, captains must put both the large caliber main battery armament and the aviation squadrons to effective use. Uh, yeah, I don't think the guns are really much use at all, sadly, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I'm not going to go over too many of the specifications from that dev blog because there were some changes made. One of the things to know is that in this video, um, the ship is going to appear naked because uh, even as far back as that first dev blog, uh, there was a note that said that Hildebrand's permanent camo is still a work in progress. Uh, I don't see any update about that. Also, even the airplanes here have identical paint jobs on them. There are two different types of aircraft in this footage. Torpedo bombers at the back of the aircraft, uh, at the back of the ship, forgive me, and bombers in front. They have identical lettering and identical camo on all of them. The only, things, the only thing that's different is the... Uh, the uh the weapon that they're carrying so that's pretty weird so maybe that's part of uh the issue here uh with the permanent camo because permanent camo on permanent camo off no change so kind of bizarre after um the initial dev blog there was an update in august august 22nd 2024 and uh, there were some changes made to the ship after the initial testing. Uh, they changed the main battery reload. It was uh, buffed from 17 to 15 seconds. The tra tra traverse was buffed. The AP shell damage was buffed. We'll look at the actual specs here in a moment. But just to give you a sense of how underperforming this thing must have been in its original configuration, there was a change to the aircraft as well. Um, the torpedo bombers were significantly buffed. And they also um, changed the uh, parameters on the bombers, giving a, a buff to the uh, consumable for repair party on the airplanes, uh, increasing the, uh, the repair consumable action time. So what we're looking at here is the final version. 
and it is um, a buffed version from the original. But boy, oh boy, not uh, not not too exciting. I want you to watch the rest of the video so you can judge for yourself. But uh, it's important to understand that this thing is kind of a, a bit of a dog's breakfast. I've said this before about a different ship. Some of you disagreed then, but it, it's it's not really good at anything. And it's uh, not going to be cheap. Speaking of which, you'll be able to get this for uh, the typical loot box gamble mechanic. Uh, so buyer beware. It's going to be available in containers for purchase. You can get the containers individually for 1,250 doubloons for each container, which has a 2% chance per container of dropping the ship. Or you can buy discounted bundles of 10. So if you buy the discounted bundles of 10 and you don't receive the ship after 10 bundles, which would total 50 containers, at a price of 49,874 doubloons, Hildebrand will be available for one credit. So absolutely uh, an effort to, um, to offer a doubloon gambling loot box mechanic. Uh, and I generally would advise you to avoid gambling with loot boxes. Uh, if you really want a ship, you should just try and find a way to buy it outright. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to ever be available outright for purchase, but um, but generally speaking, a ship like this tends to be. So be patient would be my advice. Let's take a look at the armor scheme. It's actually surprisingly tanky. The, uh, that dev blog back in uh, July described it as um, having a large pool of hit points, which we can look at real fast. Before we look at 68,150 with a 37% torpedo protection reduction. The uh, Citadel is relatively well protected, but the uh, hangar and the deck, not quite so much. So you lack that 32 millimeter armor threshold up here, and the hangar itself is only 19. I mean, destroyers will rip you to pieces, let alone anything with bigger guns. The bow is only 27. And as I mentioned, yeah, you're gonna take a ton of damage in here if somebody gets you broadside. This is 50 millimeters, which isn't bad. You get some side planting at 90. Let's remove the torpedo protection. And you, you see some uh, turtlebacky sort of armor here, angled. But it's a certainly a long citadel. But the most vulnerable part is underwater, and it's protected by this strip here. There's a better look at it. So let's walk through the rest of the ship specifications. <clears throat> they list the, uh, let, let's look at these numbers real fast just to give us a, a sense of what we're looking at. So it's rating here at 80. These, these are not objective figures, but they should provide some context. If you played this game at all and you're playing it tier 10, you should have some sense of what this means. So 87, 76 for the aircraft, 93 for the artillery, which I don't know how in the world that number comes up. Uh, airstrike is 17. That's for ASW. AA is 85. That's actually been surprisingly effective in the testing I've done. Maneuverability 55, concealment 53. Okay. So we talked about the hit points. That's as built. That's as built. That's not uh, all. All the numbers we're looking at here are based on the ship build and the captain's build, which we will look at at the end of the video. So you have these two different types of uh, aircraft. 
for some reason, even though they look like they're identical models, as we, we looked at them a moment ago. The torpedo bombers have, have 1,966 uh, hit points, um, and that was one of the consequences of the, of the buff that took place in August. They're pretty fast, which is characteristic of these uh, German aircraft. But I found them to be pretty fragile against decent AA. Not nearly as fragile as the HE bombers. The torpedoes themselves have a maximum torpedo damage of 5,213. I found that they rarely have ever uh, caused floods. They do make the, they do um, prepare very quickly, very quickly. So they are available on a on a fairly regular basis, and it's one of the reasons why the ship sort of screams rely on the torpedo bombers, and yet they're so ineffective. The HE bombers take forever to be ready at the start of a match. You'll see when we show the gameplay that the torpedo bombers. Uh, it took over four minutes from the start of the match to even be ready to, to, to use in the game. And their uh, prep time is definitely longer than the torpedo bombers. But look down there at the values for armor penetration and fire chance uh, and, the, and the alpha on the maximum bomb damage. If you land these things, if your aircraft survive and the hit points on the aircraft, dis and there is a repair party, but it's not that useful, your aircraft hit points are only 1,759, as built here. Um, if you land a strike, though, massive alpha at 13,700, armor pen at 68 millimeters, and a fire chance of 79%. Um, so that's pretty impressive if you can get them to the target and land your, your shells. Looking at the guns, I got to say they're pretty underwhelming. Uh, there's not enough of them. There's no turret in the back. Two turrets up front. These are 305s, basically the same as the A gear. The biggest difference is that the alpha damage on the A gear is lower. If you look at the uh, AP on the A gear, it's 9100. If we look at the Hildebrand, this is one of the things they buffed. 9500 alpha damage on the AP. The HE is... Uh, an alpha of 3,600 and a fire chance of 28% with armor pen at 76 millimeters. I found that the guns though were unreliable. I found that even with that dispersion of 189 meters out at 18.5 uh, kilometers, that basically it was a, a shotgun. Uh, and I was getting some decent salvos in with the HE primarily because the shells were going uh, all around various large target superstructures. Um, but these are definitely not uh, surgical weapons whatsoever. And I, nobody who plays, okay, very few people who play German cruisers like the Hindenburg and who enjoy being able to hit what they aim at and do regular damage with um, HE or really decent armor pen with, uh, with some of the AP is going to be drawn to this ship because of its guns. I, I just don't think that's the case. It is a very mediocre artillery platform. If you ask me, uh, the secondaries, this is not a ship to be built for secondaries, um, but you'll notice that in some of the gameplay, or you may notice my secondaries go off. I did not build it for secondaries, um, but because of the build that I took, uh, had some additional benefits for secondaries. They may be uh, appearing to go off uh, sooner than you would expect, but this ship is definitely not built for secondaries, and I wouldn't recommend it. Um the airstrike, you get two two attack flights, eight kilometers. You know, at least they're not ship based. This is for ASW. Again, the AA works surprisingly well. Um, I did not find myself really worrying or being focused or suffering uh, at the hands of any CVs, and I ran into quite a few of them. Uh, I did suffer a bit at the hands of Dutch cruisers, like a Golden Lou. Uh, the AA didn't work nearly as well there as I'd hoped it would, and I I caught fire quite a few times, um, but otherwise uh, relatively decent. All these figures, once again, are as built. Maximum speed of 35.7 knots, turning circle radius of 880 meters, rudder shift time of 14.1, not very agile, but you wouldn't expect something like this to be very agile. 
The concealment uh, is 12.5. That's the same, essentially, as some Tier 10 battleships. I mean, not surprising given the fact that you've got the humpback of Notre Dame on your uh, Notre Dame on your on your back there, but um, not great concealment for a cruiser at tier ten. Definitely makes you more vulnerable. Um, so yeah, keep keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> let's uh, let's go over some gameplay now, shall we? So here's a bit of gameplay for you. Uh, this first uh, excerpt from a game where there were uh, carriers demonstrates just the most insane uh, spotting damage. And it also sort of shows how broken spotting damage is in, uh, in hybrid ships. Like, why is there no timer on my hybrid airplanes? Uh, why am I allowed to just fly around like this and spot and spot and spot? If you look up in the upper right hand corner and maybe go back to see where this segment started, this is four minutes of gameplay sped up to compress it into a one minute segment and just watch those numbers climb. I mean, fortunately, my teammates and I'm not even in a division here. I didn't play any of these games in a division. My teammates are shooting what I'm spotting. And just look at these numbers go up in the upper right hand corner as I fly around. And there's no answer to this, no defense from the aircraft carrier or the other ships that were nearby. Here's the spotting damage. It totaled 162,775 in this game. I didn't shoot much with my main guns, but I absolutely helped us get a win. Here's an example of the AP working in a fairly specific situation. This is close in combat. Cruiser comes in, shows his broadside and gets punished for it. I try to follow up with a torpedo strike, but it's not very effective. In fact, these airplanes I found to be incredibly, incredibly fragile. Here's an example of a fairly massive hit with the HE bombers. Notice I'm starting with six airplanes here and in a very short period of time, striking a Montana, I come in, make my strike, Somehow I managed to get through. He must not have priority sector uh, selected. And I got over 11,000 in damage on that strike with the HE. Pretty amazing. When it works, it works very impressively. But I found that those airplanes, the HE bombers in particular, were incredibly fragile. If you've noticed that there's a skull and crossbones in the left-hand corner of the screen, that's because the chat in games were in these games were incredibly, incredibly toxic. Here's an example of how bad the gun angles are, the turret angles on the ship. Look, look at the angle here. In fact, there's even the prompt that says you're unable to shoot in this direction. And as a result, I have to shoot, show this Monty a ton of broadside and look at how he punishes me. Just 24,000 was that damage? Massive amount of punishment. Really makes these guns, really makes the ship as a cruiser very weak, in my opinion. One more example of the HE airstrike. This is against a Tier 9 Awami, not known for its great AA. And here we go with a 15,000 hit on this poor Awami. This game was kind of a raffle stomp anyway. But yeah, the guns are not fantastic. Occasionally they work. Occasionally they start fires. And the airplanes are fragile and your main armament makes you kind of a sniper who camps, generally speaking. Ended up going 50-50 for the night though. Here are the results. Nothing exciting from my perspective. All right, let's take a look at the uh, upgrades that I had on the ship during the testing. And let's also take a look at the captain's build. So for ship upgrades, I ran main armaments mod one, damage control mod one, tried to do something to make the guns a bit more accurate. Not that it helped me a whole lot. Uh, the torpedo planes are important. So air groups modification three, they're definitely a big part of this. And keep in mind that this, this buffed the squadron HP on both kinds of aircraft 
uh, both the HE bombers and the torpedo bombers, and they still seemed like they were paper thin, super fragile to me. They also got some speed in there and some faster uh, preparation time. Concealment, and then a main battery reload, which negatively impacts your traverse speed a bit. Over to the captain skills. They issue this as a rental uh, to me, um, so this captain is uh, not a special captain. I went with turret traverse. I'm going to go ahead and drop this open so we can look at how some of these uh, choices affected the performance. So traver turret traverse helps me uh, bring back in some of the uh, speed I lost by going with reload in slot six. This was sort of a throwaway one pointer. It went with gun feeder to switch between the HE and the AP. If we look here, um, I guess only when, I guess when it's not, I feel like an idiot. I thought that this would show me what's being buffed here. Um, but yeah, so we get 40% reduction in our, in our switching type. The focus fire training, it, uh, Again, helps primarily with the aircraft prep time. This gets me my torpedo bombers and my HE bombers back faster. Um, there's a little bit of uh, help here with the AA, but I don't know that it had much of an impact on my gameplay. This is one area where you might uh, choose differently from me. Uh, in fact, well, you may choose very differently from me, uh, both in terms of whether you want to get the ship and uh, how you build it. But uh, an area that a lot of folks might think um, differently about would be survivability expert. This is what got me up to 6,800, 68,000. Come on, Arrow. Words are hard. 68,150 uh, hit points. That's 450 hit points per tier. Um, you could instead swap this out for superintendent and get some more healing and get one more hydro. I never ran out of hydros. Um, I didn't really run out of heals either, so I think starting out with the additional uh, hit points makes more sense, so that's why I made that choice. Adrenaline Rush. Uh, this is the skill that got uh, a 20% greater secondary battery firing range. That's why you may have noticed the secondaries going off a bit early for a non-secondary ship in uh, a cruiser. Uh, but I, I took this pack-a-punch skill to boost the torpedo damage, and I don't think it really did very much, um, despite taking it. Um, bloody hell. It doesn't even show me. Oh, there's the torpedoes. Yeah, the torpedo damage is alpha is only 5,213. So that's with a 15% buff, thanks to this. Concealment, pretty obvious. And then uh, this skill, top grade gunner, not for the secondaries, but... When um, any ship is within my standard detection range, my main battery reload will improve by 8%. So that's why I went that way. And as you can see, these were the flags I was playing with, uh, or the signals. I wanted to do everything I could to buff my chance of getting a flooding, and I got very few. Uh, it, because I didn't want to waste time, if I detonated, I took the debt flag and paid the debt flag tax, um, trying to minimize being lit on fire. Uh, and burning out so I could get the testing done, tried to, to, to buff my AA the speed just to get around the map a little bit better. And again, that's part of why this thing is doing 35.7 knots. Healing if necessary. So three heals, three hydros as built. Um, and to try and light more fires. I had a lot of those flags, uh, and that was the reasoning that uh, I used to do that. Um, so... Hildebrand, 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 two turrets in front, six barrels. The guns are 305s with two different kinds of aircraft, torpedo bombers and HE bombers. I, I got to tell you, um, and let me let me explain this because on the one of the last uh, review videos, I got some grief about the title stating my opinion, and um, I want to I want to say, and if that person's watching again, who who gave me that grief, it was just one person. 
I don't think you really understand how opinion pieces work. I come from a background in professional journalism, uh, aviation, space, and defense. And there's a difference between news and editorializing or opinion piece. So real quickly here, uh, a news headline should be simple and factual. Uh, NASA lands first human on moon. That's a fact. An opinion piece is the opinion of the author of the opinion piece. Um, NASA should spend more money on lunar exploration. That doesn't mean that the reader has to agree with it, but it means that that's the opinion of the person who wrote the piece. So if I write a title for this video that says why you should buy Hildebrand or why you should not buy Hildebrand, I'm not saying that's a universal truth or that everyone has to hold the same opinion as me. I'm saying that if I met you at a party, I would say this is why you should not buy the Hildebrand. And you'd be perfectly within your right to say, you know what, Arrow, I disagree with you. Perhaps you're going senile. Uh, I like it. I like hybrid ships and I'm going to get it. But that doesn't make the title as an opinion piece inaccurate or misleading, which is what the other person accused me of. It means that they didn't agree with it. I am 100% here for you all who love hybrid ships and who disagree with me about the conclusion I'm about to share with you. That's what's great about living at a time and place where there's freedom of thought. But my opinion is what I'm sharing with you. And hopefully, based on my experience, it's why you came to watch the video this far. So here's my takeaway. Sorry for the long-winded uh, wind-up to that. I absolutely would avoid this thing like the plague. Unless you're a collector or a real hybrid ship lover, I really think you'll find that you don't get out of the hybrid aspect of this much in the way of effective gameplay. Sure, if you're top tier and you're really lucky with the matchmaker, you may be able to fly these fragile aircraft around and get your strikes in and get lots of damage. I did have one game with over 100k damage, uh, and that one was, I believe, a top tier game, but there were tier 10 ships in the game as well. Um, but the guns themselves are anemic. And if you play World of Warships to do anything other than play carriers uh, the, and you like the guns, I think you're going to find these guns very disappointing. I did land some citadels. I did get some fires. I did do some damage with the guns, but they're really underwhelming. And the torpedo bombers, the torpedo planes are also very underwhelming and they're very fragile. And they're, the HE uh, aircraft are incredibly fragile. HE bomber aircraft are incredibly fragile. And they are um, very infrequent in their availability. And if you lose them, you got to wait a very long time to try again. So that along with the, uh, the fact that they are trying to get you to buy this with your doubloons in gambling loot boxes. My advice is it's a hard pass. Wait till you can buy it. If you really want it, wait till you can buy it for a known price for doubloons. So you don't have to gamble and um, add it to your port. But otherwise I would say, hold on to your cash, uh, control that impulse, hold on to those doubloons and uh, definitely skip this thing. I don't think it's very attractive looking. I love aircraft. I'm a pilot myself, a civilian pilot. Uh, but this thing absolutely doesn't float my boat. Maybe it floats yours. And if that's the case, again, you do you. I'm 100% here for you. Um, but that's my opinion. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would uh, hit the like button and leave a comment. And you'd probably enjoy this video reviewing another ship next. Thanks for being here.